When you push the joystick up, the car will go forward. When you press the button, the motors will stop. Down means backward. Then there's left and right. This code is for a small robotic car that's controlled by a joystick. You will need both an H-bridge driver to control the motors and a joystick to control which motor is on or off. To learn how the H-bridge driver works, please see my previous video. This video is going to focus on the joystick. To hook up the joystick, you need a power and ground wire, and then you will see an X and Y pin. The X and Y pins are connected to potentiometers. Hook them up to the analog pins on the Arduino board. As the potentiometers are moved left or right or up and down, the values read by the analog signal will change. These signals are going to be between 0 and 1023. In this code, I've already calibrated it to figure out what the different positions are. So when the joystick is in the neutral position, the X value is around 500 and the Y value is around 500 as well. When you move the joystick left, the X value goes down towards 0. When you move it right, the X value goes towards 1023. And then similarly for the Y values, when you push the joystick up, they go towards 0, and, you and when you push the joystick down, they go towards 1023. This may depend on the manufacturer, so you will have to calibrate your own joystick and figure out which values work for you. In addition to those four pins, there's an additional pin for the button. The button simply reads either high or low. I personally plugged it into the analog signal, but you could also plug it into a digital pin. Just make sure your code reflects this. So if you go down to setup, notice that I put all of the motor pins as outputs, but I did not have to signify the button or the X and Y joystick as inputs. That's because the analog signals are already inputs as the default setting. However, if you put your button on a digital pin, you will have to declare it here as an input. When you go down to the void loop, I started off by reading what the values of the potentiometer and the button are. So I used analog read for all of them. Again, if you want to plug your button into a digital pin, you would want to use digital read here instead of analog read. I printed the values, so I was able to calibrate it. And then you'll notice when the Y value goes to zero, so I'm pushing it up, I move forward. When the value of the Y increases above the 500, it means it's moving backwards. X value, when it's decreasing, turn left. X value, when it's increasing, turn right. I also use the button to tell all the motors to turn off for don't move. And all of these different movements are created through subroutines. So notice for the don't move, all of the motors have been turned low or off. For the backward motion, uh, certain pins had to be high while other pins were low. Uh, to figure out exactly which ones have to be high or low, you'll have to see how you plugged in your motor into your motor driver. In this code, the joystick is being used to control two different servo motors. The servos will control a tilt table. One servo has been designated as the inside for the table and the other servo is for the outside of the table. The initial position is at 90. That's because the servo can go between 0 and 180 and 90 is a neutral position when the table is flat. Attach each servo to a specific pin and in the setup write to position 90. In void loop I use analog read to read each X and Y value of the joystick. I already know that when the X value is less than 500, that means I am pushing the joystick left. If it's greater than 500, it's moving right. And if I'm, if I have a value of less than 500 for Y, it means I'm pushing the joystick up and greater than 500 is down. However, the values of 0 to 1023 
are not going to work for my servo, so I'm going to use the map function. I create a new integer called POSI, that's for the position of the I servo, the inside servo, and I'm going to map the X value, which is coming from the potentiometer of the joystick. The original values were from 0 to 1023, but I'm going to change them to be between 65 and 95. Technically, they could be between 0 and 180 for the servo. However, that tilts the table way too much, and anything you have inside of the maze would actually fall out. So 65 to 95 was a good range. I do the same thing, I, uh, again, for the Y values. So I create position O for the outside servo, and I map my Y value from 0 and 1023 to 90 and 110, which happened to work well for that servo. Once these values have been mapped, I make sure that those servos write to the specific position that they read. And this worked really well. Uh, you'll have to calibrate it for your own servo and for your own joystick, depending on what values you get.